What up, gang? Caroline Chop Hot Time coming at you on Wednesday morning. A very cold Wednesday morning. It, look, I'm wearing like a thin, long sleeve t shirt to work in. I'm like one of those people, I'm getting really cold, but when I put on like a hoodie or a jacket or something like that and try to work in it, I'm like sweating buckets. So I'm going to have to just muscle my way through it, but glad to see you this morning. I know I said in that video on Sunday night that uh, I wasn't going to sit around and wait on Shane Beamer to fire coaches and make changes because he needed to hold himself accountable first. Well, I I have serious doubts he's going to hold himself accountable. He has to fix this program. The only way he's going to fix it is he has to cut some dead weight. He has to get some elite people, not, not necessarily elite people or elite minds, some some very good minds, some much better minds than what he has to help him. Tick tock, tick tock. The season's been over since Saturday night about 11 o'clock. Haven't seen anything yet, haven't heard anything yet, haven't heard any rumblings yet. Nobody's been cut loose. He's going to keep it all together. You know what? I, I, I think, honestly, that that is what Shane and Beamer is going to do. I think that he's going to keep um, every crappy coach he has on that uh, staff. He's going to keep everybody that could be upgraded. And I just I just think that he's just going to think that by osmosis and or, uh, organically, big, big biology words here for a uh, tailor ship man, that they're going to just get better somehow. I, 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 I get, the first person who should have hit the chopping block was the strength and conditioning coach, Luke Day. And I, and I liked Luke Day in 2021, and I was like, man, uh, we've went through most of this season with, with very little injuries. It's, it's like uh, almost everybody's been staying healthy. For the most part, there was some freak stuff. If you remember Luke Doty got his foot stepped on the first day of practice in the fall uh, in Beaver's first year there. So that that's a freak thing, though. Okay, That's not a strength and conditioning issue. That's a not looking where you're going issue, uh, for lack of better terms. The past two years, however, have been an absolute nightmare. Th this year it especially being an absolute nightmare on the injury front. Soft tissue injuries all over the place. And, I mean, there's nowhere else, there's nowhere else to point the finger. You can't, you cannot allow that to keep happening and just brush it off and say, well, you know, God, God, I mean, God, God, you know, it was just bad luck. It's just, you know, it's just unfortunate. It's just shitty luck. No, it's not crappy luck. These guys were not strong enough they're not physically fit you know okay i'm not saying they're not physically fit they're not ready to take on the competition that they take on week in and week out because their bodies aren't ready for it and the guys that they're playing their bodies are so they punish them they're punishing them and that's why they're getting injured there's nowhere else to look but strength and conditioning and nutrition okay all right you're gonna Go fire the guy that dispenses the cereal into the bowls in the mess hall. Okay, well, so be it. If that's what you got to do, go fire the guy that dispenses the cereal into the bowls in the mess hall. If you think that he's the issue with the nutrition. And I'm just kind of throwing that out there as an analogy. But something, something has got to happen. And so far, nothing has happened. Nothing at all. And I haven't even heard any rumblings of anything happening. They have went out and apparently offered a couple of guys out of the transfer portal. One's an offensive guard uh, from Southern Miss. And then you got another one from another lower level school. Um, and then they have uh, offered a tight end from Harvard. Oh, that's good. Um, now, keep in mind, they can't offer you're really not going to be offering many Power 5 guys right now because 
there, there can't officially be a transfer portal until after the conference championship games have been played. These other guys are or would be graduate transfers, so then they can do that. And then, and then there's so many other rules in there, which some, some I believe, may be made up. Yeah, I, it, it's very, very loose. Uh, there, there, there's not a lot of enforcement, in my opinion, on the transfer portal. I'm not saying we need to crack down on the transfer portal. We need to stop all this crazy mess. No, we, we don't. I mean, when we hear the, trans the portal doesn't open until after the conference championship games are played, and then it's open for 45 days. Okay, then, then we hear, oh, well, there's a bunch of guys jumping into the portal. And, oh, we're, we're recruiting this guy out of the portal. And all of a sudden, we're like, well, well, what? I mean, because I thought, you know, so, you know, you got to, like, read between the lines, and you, you have to really educate yourself on it. Because there are a lot of things. I don't think anybody knows everything, 100%. I don't think anybody's a, a transfer portal expert. But uh, in terms of uh, getting rid of dead weight, uh, our, our buddy J.C. Sherbet, the uh, South Carolina 24-7 correspondent over on the uh, Spurs Up Show dudes show yesterday, said, you know, I know all, all fans are, are hollering. They won't change. We won't change. You know, well, right now it's more important to to recruit your roster and start looking at the portal and all this and we've learned that Shane Beamer's going to kind of make decisions on his own time frame. Yeah, he does. And how has that worked out? What's more important? Going out here and beating up the transfer portal to get the guard from Ole Miss right now or, or excuse me, Southern Miss. Southern Miss, not Ole Miss. Southern Miss. We're not, we, we can't. Uh, or you know, going on ahead and telling your strength and conditioning coach, look buddy, um, we appreciate your service, but um, it's no longer required here. We're going to go a different direction. What well, I mean, get the tough jobs out of the way first. Get them out of the way first. Now, defensive coordinator-wise, I'm, I'm, I'm almost sure that Shane Beamer's not going to make a change there. I, because You know why? Because the defense performed better the past three games, jackpot. It, it performed better. So, you know, we switched to that. We he switched about over back to he switched to a 3 3 5 type scheme. And, uh, you know, they, look at look what they did, jackpot. I mean, they only allowed 20 points the last three games. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. 20 points. No, 29 points. You also did that against the number 52 ranked offense in the country, that being Clemson. 52 is not great, but. Uh, their passing situation, really, really, really. Their throw game brings their score down a lot, a lot. And if you saw their throw game on Saturday night, you would wonder how they're ranked 52. Now, they're the 52-ranked offense in the country. Kentucky is the number 100-ranked offense in the country. And Vanderbilt's number 114, which I thought was a little bit high. For Vanderbilt, but they're 114. So that's an average of what? 90? These weren't exactly, um, yeah, yeah these, these, these weren't exactly those three yards in a cloud of dust guys. From, I mean, uh, I don't know. You know, I mean, you weren't, um, you know, you weren't taking on a top offensive team in the country when you were doing all these things. So, I mean, you can take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, I mean, it was good to see. It was good to see. And I, I, I don't know. I, it, it, it's like we look, for, we look for things to be, and there's nothing wrong with it, but we look for things to be positive about rather than tackle the glaring negative issues first. I feel like if you go through life and you try to tackle the glaring negative issues with things first, you know, you'll enjoy some more success later down the road. You'll enjoy success on the big, big back end instead of constantly having to fix small problems that, that come up, right? Like you know, if your toilet clogs up every third time you flush it and you're having to go get the plunger just to make your bathroom smell fresh and be clean. 
and, and that's a small problem, right? Well, then, then why continue to wait? Why continue to wait? Why not just go on ahead, bite the bullet, and get a brand new toilet? It doesn't have to be the greatest toilet in the world. It doesn't have to be an elite level Power 5 toilet, but it can be at least a serviceable Power 5 toilet, or it can be a high level Group of 5 toilet. But you, you've got to get a new toilet eventually. So those are my thoughts on that. I really don't think God's going to make any changes unless his hand is pushed or unless some of these people accept a job somewhere else. Just the way that it is, guys. Just the way that it is. I, I'm, I'm in the solid count that we just don't take football seriously enough down there. The folks with the big money that make the big decisions that swing the big stick don't care enough about football to make these, these harsh decisions until I, their hands are almost forced to do it because things have gotten so bad that everyone is almost in a total uproar. Yeah. yeah if you can't spot problems coming from a mile away, you have no business being in uh, a high-ranking position um, in athletics in, in any major university. It's no, not Not my opinion. Uh, Hey, that's just my two cents. Anyway, uh, I'm going to get on down the road, guys. Uh, hey, uh, but look, good win last night by South Carolina's basketball team. Uh, I know, you know, they're 5 and 0, no, 6 and 0 right now. Um, yeah, yeah, big home win over Notre Dame. I mean, it, it, it's a down Notre Dame team that they're not as good as what they have been. But, I mean, it's still Notre Dame. It's, it's a, a, an ACC school, <coughs> you know that at least has some sort of solid pedigree in the sport of college basketball. So, if you beat them, you're sitting here 6-0. and uh, They ought to be ranked. I think it's an absolute travesty. They're not. I'm just kidding. It's going to take a lot more than that for them to get ranked. But it's definitely a step in the right direction for Coach uh, Lamont Paris, who you know, came into the season. I mean, and these riders and stuff, they just kind of shoehorn. That, that, that's the problem with a lot of these people. They just shoehorn teams wherever they think they fit. They look at the name on the jersey and look at last year's record, and they just shoehorn them in where they think they're going to fit. Carolina just got shoehorned into the 14th place in the SEC just because. Not just because. Why? Well, well, they don't have Gigi Jackson anymore, so uh, they, they bothered to take a look at uh, any of the transfers that he was bringing in and what kind of job they'd done and, you know, how they might logically be able to fit into the basketball mix in South Carolina. But, no, we're just going to stick them in at 14th. That's fine. We won't finish 14th, and um, you'll look dumb, as you often do. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're new around here, consider staying true around here by clicking the subscribe button. And if you want to hear some more of this content real quick, you can hit the bell button. It's going to let you know that Carolina Jackpot's uploaded a video. Elsewise, if you don't want to do all that, at least just give it a like. That helps Carolina Jackpot out a lot in the uh, YouTube uh, road to ecstasy. I'll see you guys later on. Appreciate you. Peace. I'm out. And uh, go Gamecocks. Uh, 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 woo!